Hey everyone, my name is Christy. Welcome to my corner. Thank you all so much for joining me today for this special Norwegian Christmas edition of Historical Baking. Welcome to all my new subscribers. Thank you all so much for joining me on my baking and crafting adventures. And welcome back everyone who's been hanging out with me for the past, you know, however many months. Um, it, this is a channel about um, baking and embroidery and textile crafts and you know, whatever else I end up getting up to, uh, and history and the history of those things. So if that is something that you're interested in and you're not subscribed, I'd love to have you subscribe and join, um, you know, my little community here. This is a different historical baking than normal. Normally when we do historical baking, we are baking out of Hannah Mary Bouvier Peterson's The National Cookbook, which was published in 1856. Um, but today I'm going to give Hannah a rest and we are going to cook out of this well-loved, Scandinavian recipes cookbook that was my grandmother's um, and my grandmother's still alive so it's not sad um, but she can't cook anymore she can't bake anymore she uh, she has some short-term memory loss and so she can't remember what she's done and so she gifted me this this cookbook because I was the one who would bake the cookies with her and today we're gonna make krumkaka and krumkaka here well, I'll show you is a waffle type cookie and there are all sorts of different waffle type waffle type cookies out there. There are pizzelles um, for Italians, which I'm also Italian and so I love pizzelles, but there are like struff waffles, right? Um, which are Dutch maybe? I don't know. They have caramel in them. They're delightful. But waffle cookies are uh, old kinds of, they're old kinds of cookies. They're made on an iron in this case. Um, I have an electric iron that basically looks like a waffle maker or a pizzelle maker. It's a crumb kaka maker. And every Norwegian family has their own recipe. And I have four. So in the book are two crumb kaka recipes. And then we have Gladys's crumb kaka recipe, which has been stapled in here. And you can tell like <laughs> that this is one of the well-loved pages. I'll show you a close-up of this one when we start baking. Um, so we have Gladys's crumb kaka recipe stapled in there, but very lightly in pencil is my grandmother's recipe. And so she wrote that in in pencil. So that's the one we're going to use. And it's um, five eggs, one cup of sugar, salt. I put in a half, of a half a teaspoon of salt, one cup of butter melted, one cup of cream, three cups of flour, or two cups flour, one cup cornstarch. I just did the straight flour and then almond. And I don't know why it says almond. We've never had crumb cock with almond. Our crumb cock is always, always, always cardamom flavored, but it doesn't say how much cardamom to put in it. And the thing about cardamom is that you don't want to put too much in because it tastes medicinal. And so I always end up putting too little in. And that's what I did here. I, there's a little bit of cardamom taste, but there's not a ton of cardamom taste, which I love me some cardamom, so I want it to be really heavy cardamom, but my fiance does not love cardamom as much as I do, so he's probably pretty happy with these the way they are. Speaking of him, so these are cone cookies, and we just eat them like this. You know, we don't put anything in them, but he joins the family and is like, well, that's a cone, and cones have things in them, and so he started putting whipped cream in his crumb kaka, which was appalling to me. Well, he was very pleased this year to find out that cream and fruit is the traditional way of eating crumb kaka and that um, we were the wrong ones. So he's been kind of dancing around the house about that for two days. <laughs> Regardless, I'm not putting cream in mine. I'm eating them without cream like I normally do. He can put cream in his. Um, so anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna make some crumb kaka using my grandmother's recipe. So I'm gonna put you kind of back here in an awkward position for the first part just to get things rolling and then you know, we'll mix up the dough and use our iron, which I'll talk about afterwards. And let's get started. Let's make us, let's make these crumb kaka. This is a bit of an awkward angle, but I'm going to try my best to, to do this. So um, we are, of course, going to use the handwritten recipe in pencil that my grandmother wrote. And I mean, <laughs> the thing I love about cookbooks like this is that you can tell, you know, the crumb kaka page is like, the page that we use but then we also make berliner kronzers and then as you get away from them it gets 
cleaner and cleaner and cleaner and you know I don't even know what a rug broad is but I think this might be a really fun book to make stuff out of. I have made crumb caca. Uh, there are probably rosettes in here, Berliner Kranzer. We however are making crumb caca. Where is that page? Easy to find because it has a stapled thing. So we're going to be doing this. There's no kind of um, process. Uh, so I'm going to kind of go with this method here for crumb caca too. It's five eggs, one cup of sugar, some salt. I don't know, I'll put in like a half teaspoon. None of the other ones have salt in them. One cup of butter melted, one cup of cream, three cups of flour, or you could do two cups of flour and one cup of cornstarch, but I'm gonna go with all the flour. And then it says almond, but we always put cardamom in. So I have um, cardamom. And in fact, to me, crumb caca is not crumb caca if it doesn't have cardamom in it. So we're gonna do that. And I don't have any, any measurement for the cardamom. So I'm probably gonna put in a, a teaspoon and see how that looks. Um, if you can kind of see it a little bit in there, I feel like you'll be able to taste it a little bit. So I'm going to cream the butter and the sugar, although you don't really have to cream it since the butter's melted, but I'm going to mix the butter and the sugar. And then I think I'm just gonna th throw it all in, right? I'm just gonna put it all in this bowl, have my cup of sugar in here. So let's get started. Oh, and I always use a hand mixer. I, I don't use my KitchenAid. I don't know why. I just, this is, this is, this is how you do it, right? So let's do it. I don't have a ton of information about the history of crumb caca. It was a waffle cookie, like I said, and so was cooked in an iron like this one over an open fire and later in wood burning stoves. Some irons date back to the 1700s, but they weren't made commercially until 1948 by Nordic ware like this one. It is an important part of Norwegian and Norwegian American Christmas traditions. And in my research, I actually found a Krumkaka polka. So I will link to that video below. It is essentially a polka version of someone reading the recipe for Krumkaka. So that is all of the wet ingredients. And it is a basically a thick batter. As you'll see when I put it on the iron, which is right back here right over there basically you can scoop it you ha you you need two spoons so you scoop it up with a spoon and then you scrape it off the spoon with another spoon so it's going to be a fairly thick batter but it is a batter so i need to make sure i have the the measurements on that right last time i made them maybe two times ago i made them i made the batter a bit too thin so this time i want to make sure i don't do that so i have my all-purpose flour right here We'll put in three cups of that. And I think I'll put in all of the dry ingredients right now. So I'll put in some of the, the salt, whatever salt I'm gonna use. I think I said a, a, a teaspoon of salt and I'm gonna put in the teaspoon of cardamom. And I never, I'm so bad with choosing bowls that go <laughs> with the amount. I made soup the other night and I literally had a half an inch from the, <laughs> from the soup to the, um, yeah, we'll do a half teaspoon from the top of the soup to the, to the top of the bowl. It was, it was very, very close. <laughs> So this is probably going to be a very full bowl of crumb caca batter because I have no sense of how much space something needs. I do think I'm going to do a teaspoon of cardamom. I really like cardamom and I like having my, my crumb caca really taste like cardamom and last year I made it and it did not very, really taste very much like cardamom so I want to make sure even a heaping teaspoon of cardamom and I may put more in because this is quite a lot of batter to make a lot of cookies and like I said I'm sending some of these to my grandparents I'm probably gonna send some to my brother so they will get eaten and it's early in the season so they'll get eaten let's mix this up as I said Nordicware made the first commercial crumb caca maker but their most famous product was the bunt pan apparently it wasn't popular until it was used to bake a prize-winning cake in a national baking contest so there you go crumb caca and bunt which would make a terrible band name 
My poor old mixer is struggling with his batter. Um, I think my poor, I think my poor mixer can't actually handle this batter, but it's a good consistency. It makes me really happy. So I think I'm just gonna clear this off, pop these out because I don't think this will work anymore. Go in with our hands here. Well, not our hands, a spoon, a spatula. Yeah, this is because it has the eggs, you can't lick the batter. And I probably shouldn't do that on camera anyway, although you know we all do it. But I shouldn't do it on camera. And I think if they were store-bought eggs, I would actually not worry about tasting it. I might actually taste it just to see the cardamom situation. But because they're like farm eggs, um, they're not, I'm assuming that they are not pasteurized. Let's stir this up. This is good. So this is a really good thickness. It's a very thick, thick batter, which is really good. It's kind of looks perfect, actually. I'm really pleased. So I am going to taste it just to see the cardamom situation. I think the cardamom's good. And this just looks really good. So I'm going to say that this is done. I'm really pleased with this batter. Um, but you see, it's like a very thick, it's a thick batter. You can, I don't know if you can see, but you can kind of see maybe the cardamom flecks in it, which is what I want. I don't want it too cardamomy. My, my, my fiance does not have the love affair with cardamom that I do. So I don't want it to be too cardamomy for him. Okay. That's our batter. So I'm going to clean some of this stuff up. And what we need to do is heat up our iron, which is over there. I'll shift it all over here and start and start making crumb kaka. So we'll do that in a second. So we have our um, crumb kaka maker heating up. So that's what that looks like. Um, it's essentially a small waffle iron. It makes pizzelles. I have my batter right here, which you can't see with two spoons, a spatula. I have a pot to put the finished crumb kaka in. I don't know why I put it in a pot. I just, we just put it in a pot. Um, I have cotton gloves because you roll it on these cones here. So it becomes a, a cone and it's hot. <laughs> so it's like hot melted butter basically. So I put these on. We did a test one and it blew a fuse. So we're going to have to, <laughs> so we switched, we switched outlets and I'm hopeful that we will not blow a fuse this time. It just clicked off. There's a little light down here, and so it'll click off. So let's make another test batch. You just take a little on your spoon, push it off. Hear it sizzle. I know, I'm so excited. Chrome cock is like Christmas to me. And Lock that down and you just wait for it to, to cook, essentially. I mean, it's essentially a little waffle and it's like a waffle cookie. Like I said, like pizzelles and um, stroop waffles, right? Any number of waffle cookies. Apparently they're an incredibly ancient kind of cookie. And normally, um, and you would have seen this, I, I'll, I will have inserted pictures of this already. But obviously in the olden days, you would have had an, an iron over a heating source that you would flip over like a waffle. Oh, it smells good. No, not yet. A little bit more. And these newer electric ones, they're supposed to stay at the right temperature, but it does sometimes get a little bit too hot. So we'll see how this one goes. I have a lot of batter. That's gonna make a lot of crumb caca. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm giving a lot of it away. But I just remember, yeah, these are small. I need to make them bigger. Um, I just remember doing this with my grandmother. Um, yeah, that didn't work so well. It's almost like if they're too thick, and I don't 
don't know. Hmm. That's too thick. Well, we'll try another one. That might be too hot. Um, if it gets too hot, then you have to unplug it because, which is unfortunate since it's unplugged over there. But that's okay. We'll make a bigger one. This one's going to get all everywhere, I'm sure. I always end up making ones that are too big and they squirt out the sides. But, you know, I'm not really big on exact. <laughs> yeah, so we used to make these with my grandmother every Christmas. And she would keep them in a pot, which is why I keep mine in a pot. And, I don't know, um, cardamom, I really love cardamom. It reminds me of, um, and I love cardamom because of creme paca. Um, when I... I didn't realize that cardamom was in savory foods until recently uh, because to me cardamom is creme paca. Cardamom is for sweet things and so having it in savory things is just very strange to me. But the nice thing about creme paca is that you don't have to like oil the, the iron because there we go those look good. That's a little bit better. It's still cracking though. Hmm. I must have done something wrong, but then, you know, you know me. I always do do something wrong. But it's better. It's better. That's a good size. Um, anyway, you don't have to like oil or grease the crumb cocker maker because there's so much butter in the batter, if you can get it off the spoon. There's so much butter in the batter that it like greases itself. So that's kind of nice. But you don't have to worry about it sticking. And it smells really nice. It smells like cardamom and baking. Yeah, let's try. We're gonna try this piece here. Yeah, it's a little soft. It could've used more cardamom. I knew, I kind of thought it could've. It's not very cardamomy. Hmm, that's too bad. My first ones are always a little rough. <laughs> I feel like that's almost always the case. I think I'm gonna put more cardamom in. Okay, I put in some more cardamom. We'll see if that helps. I'm disappointed by this cracking. Sounds like the souls of the damned. So, I don't know, they're too thick, and so they're cracking, but we'll just soldier on and make them as they are, and I don't know if maybe I don't want the butter melted, maybe they're too wet, I know that, you know, I don't, I don't know, the batter looks right though, that's the thing. I don't know. I'll just keep making them. I wish they weren't so thick and cracking. It's a bit of a bit of a mess back there. So it turns out that um, the reason why they're so thick is not because I messed up with the batter. It's because my crumb caca maker is busted. So this top part here, this top metal part, is not connected to the hot plates. And so when it closes it just kind of lifts up the back and doesn't put the pressure on the waffles, the crumb caca that they need. And so 
they are um, really thick. So when I was holding it down really hard, they became much better. But the problem is that it gets really hot because the steam's like shooting out and it like basically burns my hands. So I think I'm just going to have to deal with thick and cracked crumb caca this year and then I will get a new crumb caca maker for next year. But again, they'll still be delicious so I'm not really going to worry about it too much. And um, yeah. <laughs> But it's nice to know that I'm not screwing up the recipe because you know, you guys know, you, you're here with me screwing up recipes left and right. I'm just really glad that that's not what this is about. That this is just about um, a crumb caca maker that has been moved one too many times. And, you know, <laughs> is a little bit busted. Um, I don't have much to go, so I'm going to finish up this batch, and I'll see you when they're all done. And this, my friends, is the last one. It's a puffy one, but that's okay. So... I definitely, for next year, need to get a new crumb caca maker, but that is for next year, and I'm not going to worry about it. So for now, I'm going to unplug this, clean everything up, and I'll see you back here when that's done. So there you have it. That's the crumb caca making for 2020, and like everything else in 2020, it was um, a bit of a, a bit of a mess, and I kind of want to show you... I want to show you the maker and I want to show you the issues that I'm having with this maker. So this has gone through probably three moves with me. Um, and so it's heavy, so I don't want to break it. I mean, I don't want to drop it again because it'll crack the floor. But if you see right here, I don't know if you can, I'm trying to get it in the light. There is a big old dent right there. You can like see into the machine. There's another dent on the front maybe I don't know but that's kind of the big one and if you I'll hold it like this um, if you can see here it opens up right like this part here is no longer connected to these heat plates so what this means is that I need to get a new crumb caca maker for next year and and that's fine because I was thinking that I was messing something up. And those of you who watch my historical baking videos or really watch any of my videos know that I am not good at precise, right? That's why I do freehand embroidery rather than cross stitch. Well, I also can't count, but I'm not good at precise. Baking you have to be precise because it's chemistry. And sometimes I mess it up and sometimes I make wrong guesses, but this time I followed the recipe and so there was no reason why they should be thick and cracking the way that they were. And so I'm glad it was the machine and not me like messing it up because I've made these dozens of times with my grandmother and I made them last year and I think they were a little thick last year too. So this must have been a problem last year too and I just didn't care as much about it. I am going to get a new crumb caca maker. I'm going to keep this one until I get until I get a new one because just in case I can't get a new one, at least I can make them. And I'm going to pack up some of these for my grandmother and send them out this week. But I hope you enjoyed the kind of movement into my childhood of making crumb caca. And crumb caca was not the only cookie that we made um, out of this book. Uh, so crumb caca was the main one, but on the page before, we also have Berliner Kronzer and Berliner Kranz or Berlin Reeves were uh, sour cream based. And I think we did the Kranzer, just the Kranzer over here as opposed to the Berliner Kranzer because I'm pretty sure we used sour cream. And this one has sour cream, but Berliner Kranzer one and two do not have sour cream. And then the other thing that we made were rosettes, which are over here. and. Um, rosettes are my least favorite, but, but rosettes are my mom's favorite. And basically rosettes are a deep fried, very crispy batter. 
So you would have an iron, like it almost looks like a branding iron and you would heat it up in, um, uh, you know, hot oil and you would dip it into the, the batter uh, and, and the batter would kind of stick to it and cook and kind of cook a little bit to it. And then you would deep fry the whole thing and then you just bring the powdered sugar. So that is uh, rosettes, which I do not have rosette irons, so I will not be making rosettes. And they're my least favorite. Um, they just didn't have much taste to me. But my mom loved them, and so uh, we always had those. Berliner Kronzers were my favorites. Creme Cocoa was number two. We didn't have Berliner Kronzer every year, so when I think about Christmas, I think Creme Cocoa. And that is apparently a common thought, because Creme Cocoa means Christmas for um, Norwegians and Norwegian Americans. I um, got this red tin, so I'm gonna put them in this red tin and ship them to my grandparents, or ship some of them, however many will fit in the tin, <laughs> to my grandparents in Pennsylvania. But now I have to put the tin somewhere. I didn't think this through. Well, we'll just put it right here. And I do wanna add that uh, the, this, the cookies are not the only gift for my grandparents. They're also getting a I don't know, a vlog style DVD since they don't have any way to um, see me and I'm not going home for Christmas this year. So I decided to make a vlog style video for them. So this baking will be a part of that video, not the whole video, but you know, I'm gonna put in some pieces of this. So those of you who are watching this are also kind of part of the gift to my grandparents. I think that's it for me in my baking corner. So it's been um, great sharing this tradition with you and I'll put the recipe down below if you have a creme caca iron or a patel iron um, this will be great for that and I think that's it so um, thanks so much for watching um, please take care of yourselves and I hope you all have a good one bye